Myth number one, TRT causes roid rage. I'm not even gonna waste my goddamn time with this stupid fucking question. This is bullshit. <laughs> Get out of here. Something important to remember when it comes to this question is that we're talking about TRT here, testosterone replacement therapy, meaning we're replacing levels to where they naturally should be. So we're all men with natural normal levels of testosterone just raging assholes? Well, if you have blue hair and list your pronouns in your profile, you probably think so, but the fact is no, men are not just raging aggressive assholes. So we know that normal physiologic levels of testosterone don't drive a progression, but what if we take it to the extreme like PED use, which is often around 10 times the dose of TRT. Do we actually find that men on steroids are just running around in a fit of rage? Well, luckily we have some pretty good data to tell us if they are. This 2006 study looked at 241 men on steroids and compared them to men who are not on steroids. The study found that the risk of having been convicted for a weapons offense or a fraud was higher among individuals testing positive for steroids. Well, shit, maybe people on steroids are criminals. Or not so fast. Let's look a little deeper. When patients referred from substance abuse centers were excluded, a lower risk for crimes against property property was observed for individuals who tested positive for anabolic steroids and the risk for fraud in the two groups was equalized. So if they weren't concurrently using drugs or alcohol, the guys on steroids were actually committing less crimes, which was also backed up by this 2014 study looking at over 10,000 men on anabolic steroids. In the general population, co-occurring polysubstance abuse, other neuropsychological risks, or socioeconomic status explains most of the relatively strong association between anabolic androgenic steroid use and a conviction for violence. Crime. So people who were using drugs and alcohol and already had mental issues tended to have some rage on roids, but they had rage without roids too, so the steroids had absolutely nothing to do with it. Myth number two, TRT will make you infertile. By the way, you may have noticed my location is different and you'd be right. I'm actually on a work trip right now, but I still had to get a video out for you guys. You see the kind of shit that I do for you and that is why you, new watcher, should subscribe. But anyway, if TRT made you infertile, well then TRT would be FDA approved as a male contraceptive because we've definitely tried to make it one. It just simply doesn't work. TRT on average makes around 60% of men who use it infertile. And 60% definitely isn't insignificant, but it certainly isn't 100% like most people think it is. And there's many strategies that men can take if they want to remain fertile on testosterone. I made a whole video on it here if you want a deeper dive. Myth number three is that TRT causes heart disease. This myth is so deeply ingrained in the medical community that testosterone has a black box warning against it saying that it will cause heart disease. With a black box warning, there must have been some pretty irrefutable heart hardcore randomized control trials to say that it caused heart disease, right? Nope, no, not at all. As far as I've been able to deduce, they literally pulled this one right out of their assholes. Good Lord, Austin. What sort of things do you keep in here? Uh, anything that catches my fancy. Right? Give it a good tug. In fact, the largest randomized control trial published in 2023, 23, is 23. The largest randomized control trial called the Traverse Trial published in 2023 found that in men with hypogonadism and pre-existing or a high risk of cardiovascular disease, testosterone replacement therapy was non-inferior to placebo in respect to the incidence of major adverse cardiac events. So that's just fancy talk for saying that testosterone did not increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. There's even other papers like this paper published in 2019 that say that TRT may actually benefit the heart. TRT in hypogonadal patients is able to improve angina symptoms in subjects with ischemic heart disease and and exercise ability in patients with heart failure. In addition, when prescribed accordingly to the recommended dosage, TRT does not increase the risk of heart-related events. Number four on our list is that when you're on TRT, you need to lower your estrogen. Let's just think about this one for a minute. Again, let's remember that TRT is just giving the normal amount of testosterone that a healthy man should be producing. Now, when we produce testosterone, it can go one of two ways. It can be aromatized into estrogen or it can be 5-alpha reduced into DHT. So estradiol is a normal byproduct of testosterone and our normal physical physiology does not require lowering estrogen. So why would TRT? The fact is that if you're having trouble with estrogen, well, one, you're maybe metabolically unhealthy and overweight and you're aromatizing too much, or two, you're not dosing appropriately, like maybe too infrequently or way too much. So fix the actual problem, which is your metabolic health and or your dosing. Don't just try to take female cancer drugs. Leave those for females with cancer. Uh, but I thought estrogen was a female hormone and if I have too much of the female hormone, I'm gonna be fat and I'm gonna have no libido. Well, 
don't think again. This beautifully done study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2013 actually found that changes in fat measures were primarily related to changes in estradiol levels. Both androgens and estrogens contributed to the maintenance of normal libido and erectile function. Although these results may be surprising, they are consistent with studies showing that body fat is increased in humans and male mice with null mutations of the aromatase gene or the estrogen receptor alpha gene, and that sexual function is markedly impaired in mice and humans with these genetic defects. Meaning that men with lower estrogen are actually fatter with lower libidos. So men, realize that estrogen is our friend. It's neuroprotective, cardioprotective. It can help us gain strength. It's good for our libido. It's good for our erection quality. Just keep your estrogen there and please save the cancer drugs for the cancer patients. And for the fifth and final myth. Ooh, that rhymes. I'm on my grind. I'm in my prime. We've come this far. Don't hit rewind. This flow was smooth like a fine age wine. Actually, I'm in Detroit right now, but I am no Eminem. Sorry for that. Anyway, the fifth myth is that TRT causes prostate cancer. Nope. Now this is definitely something that the medical community once thought was true. We also used to think that we could cure headaches by drilling holes into your skull. Look it up, it's called trepanation. But in modern years, we've been able to find no causative link between testosterone and prostate cancer. In fact, there's even some data that say that men with low testosterone or hypogonadism are at higher risk of prostate cancer than men with high levels. There's actually some urologists out there now, like my good friend, Dr. Jordan Grant, who are actually treating patients who have prostate cancer with TRT. I have probably seven or eight patients who have prostate cancer and are on testosterone replacement. Their cancer is not progressing. It's their PSAs aren't going up any faster than anybody else. Um, and there's several papers on this that, you know, other doctors around the country and world are, are doing this now and they're not seeing any worsening. And guess what? They're having improved quality of life and their prostate cancer is not getting worse because of it. TRT does not come without risk, but a lot of the myths surrounding it are simply not based in fact and they're just fear mongering. When done appropriately, TRT can be extremely safe, highly effective, and really change someone's life for the better. If you want to see how I do my TRT, watch this video here.